Welcome to my BCM 390 short. My name is Hannah Manning and the theme I have chosen to look at is peacekeeping, something I am really interested in and would like to explore in a little more depth. Firstly, let's take a quick look at the key theme, peacekeeping. Definitionally speaking, peacekeeping are missions and programs undertaken by the United Nations to maintain international peace and security. Peacekeeping is guided by three basic principles of number one, consent of the parties, number two, impartiality, and number three, the non-use of force, except in self-defence or defence of the mandate. This fact sheet was taken from the UN website and gives you a brief overview of peacekeeping statistics. I'll give you a second to have a read. Most importantly, there are 16 peacekeeping missions, as you can see in the top right-hand section of this fact sheet. Over the past few decades, peacekeeping has grown to include roles of protecting and promoting human rights, facilitating the political process of nations, and this can include the organisation or facilitation of elections as well as restoring the rule of law in a country, assisting disarmament and demobilisation of groups, and also to protect civilians in conflict and or post-conflict areas. As you can see, peacekeeping is multidimensional, complex, and includes many challenging roles. Now let's take a look at my chosen media item relating to this theme of peacekeeping. So here we have an image sourced directly from the UN website that's the feature of a UN written article titled Spotlight on Female Peacekeepers. The photograph was taken in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and, as you can see, captures a battalion of UN peacekeepers. You will notice that the image contains mostly female troops. They are definitely the forefront of this image. Now, this is important for several different reasons and it also raises some interesting questions. Why would the UN be putting a spotlight on female peacekeepers? Why would they be taking a photo of only female troops in the Congo? And why promote this on the UN website? The answer has to do with the push in recent years for an increase in the number of females in all level of peacekeeping personnel. Now just take a look at this question that I've developed and below some of the answers that I think can help us answer it. Firstly, this is a response to a large number of females being targeted in gender-based violence and conflict-related sexual violence. I'm going to use the Democratic Republic of the Congo as a case study here. The UN's largest peacekeeping operation in existence resides in the Congo, MONUSCO, a mission that consists of over 22,000 peacekeeping personnel. The mission arose in the mid-1990s after the devastating genocide in neighbouring Rwanda saw conflict between several rebel and government groups. Despite stabilisation in some areas, MONUSCO reports that Eastern DRC continues to be plagued by recurrent waves of conflict, chronic humanitarian crises and serious human rights violations, including sexual and gender-based violence. Men and women have both been victims of GBV and CRSV in this area. However, for the purpose of this analysis, I will be focusing on affected females, as the number is vastly larger. Across the research I gathered, statistics varied somewhat. However, the DRC Minister for Gender, Family and Children reported over one million of the country's girls and women being victims of sexual violence. In 2004, the United States Agency for International Development, along with partner associations, 
conducted a study that assessed rape, genital mutilation and other associated violence that was employed as a weapon of war against many civilians living in eastern parts of the DRC. They found that groups used this weapon in the multiple regional and civil wars to attack, punish and take revenge on individuals and entire communities. The effects on individuals are devastating and include victims being contracted with sexually transmitted diseases such as HIV, being rejected completely by their families or communities, not to mention the severe physical and emotional damage. Part of Monasco's mandate is to help deal with this issue, to implement strategies and work with other organisations to reduce instances of gender-based violence and conflict-related sexual violence, and also to protect victims or potential victims. Along the course of my research, I came across an article titled Protection from Sexual Violence in the DRC, written by Mosley, Setinoglu and Glad. In this, they discuss possible solutions and prevention strategies to do with sexual violence in the area. They also highlight the view of Benetta Diop, an absolute pioneer of African conflict resolution. Diop wants to see successful implementation of UN Resolution 1325 throughout the peace process. So this is to see gender mainstreaming play a consistent role in rehabilitating affected areas of the DRC. To her, this is extremely important. A huge part of this involves women generating specific strategies to help women in a time where there is an absolute ocean of need. Now let's just go back to that media item. Captain Caroline Obam, a military peacekeeper in the Congo, much like the women you see pictured here, also stresses the importance of increasing female numbers of peacekeepers and addressing women's needs, especially in the DRC, where only 2.2% of Monusco are female, in a country with a majority female population. To me, something doesn't seem quite right here. Obama has stated, The Congolese women we meet are often hesitant to speak to outsiders, When they meet female patrolling officers, even if they're still uncertain, they will be much more likely to speak. I have spoken to victims of sexual violence and there is still a lot of stigma they face from their husbands and in their communities. So as you can see, one of the goals of the UN in trying to increase its female numbers is for much more effective protection, resolution and rehabilitation strategies. Women helping women, as demonstrated in this image here. The case study I've looked at today, Monusco and the problems facing the Democratic Republic of the Congo, is just one example. There are countless others all around the world, such as Timor-Leste. I think this really tells us something. We need to keep focused on this and keep building relations and improving the strategies we use well into the future. So this is another fact sheet issued by the UN, which raises even more questions. If you can see in the top left section of this image, from the years 1957 to 1989, so not really that long ago, a 32-year period in total, only 20 uniformed women served as UN peacekeepers in this entire time. In current times, there's a total of 5,160 civilian and uniformed personnel who are female. Yeah, it's an increase, but still there's only about 4% of all UN peacekeepers. A statistic I find slightly alarming. As I've discussed throughout this video, deploying more female peacekeepers can be really beneficial in peace processes. Adding to this, the UN has put a spotlight on gender equality in recent years, and not just peacekeeping either. If you guys saw Emma Watson's inspirational speech on gender equality, feminism and the He For She campaign, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's an issue that seems to be high on the UN's agenda, which I think is really great. So this brings me to the end of my short. 
I hope that you've enjoyed listening and learning a little bit more about peacekeeping and also the importance of striving towards gender mainstreaming in peace processes. Thanks.